This video is sponsored by AG1. This is episode 18, the last episode of my 2023 training diaries. In episode 17, I talked about my training throughout the season in lead up to my goal race, the Moab 240. And this time I thought I'd spend some time nerding out over all the gear that I relied on the most for both my training and racing throughout the season. And this includes everything from socks and shoes to packs and hats and poles, what worked well and what I might have changed. This always seems to be something that at least a very vocal minority are pretty interested in, if not the majority of you. And I promise that it won't all be Solomon gear, although there is a lot of that, but I'll be talking about a bunch of other brands as well. And I'll be sure to make it clear which products were given to me and which other brands I was sponsored by where applicable. And I'll include links for all of the stuff in the description below. But before I jump into all of that, I do want to thank AG1 for their support throughout the season and for sponsoring this video. AG1 is a daily foundational nutrition supplement that supports whole body health, including the brain, the gut, and the immune system. This will be especially important to help manage the stress of the holiday season and to support my immune defenses as we travel back east to visit Audrey's family over Christmas with essential vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced antioxidants. Its science-driven blend of pre- and probiotics and digestive enzymes should also help to balance out any overindulgence during the holidays, where it's easy to get out of our usual nutrition routine. With just a scoop in a glass of water first thing in the morning, it's one habit I can continue to do effortlessly thanks to the convenient AG1 travel packs. Save 20 bucks when you subscribe at drinkag1.com forward slash Jeff Peltier. And AG1 is also gonna give my audience a free one year supply of AG vitamin D3 and K2 and five AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Okay, so let's jump into it starting from the bottom up with socks. And these are the Drymax Light Mesh Quarter Crews. They come in different lengths, uh, but what you want is the light mesh design. And they are somewhat cushioned on the bottom, but they're super breathable. And I've been using these for, I think a couple of years relying on these. I am not sponsored by Drymax. I buy these locally from uh, Distance Runwear here in North Vancouver, a little independent um, specialty run store. Uh, but I've just, I just love these for all my longer events. I try, they're not the most durable socks, so I try not to use them for too much of my training. I save them for when it's really gonna count, when I'm really trying to avoid blisters. And my philosophy around shoes and socks is that you want something that's gonna, gonna dry quickly. Your shoes need to drain quickly, you know, no, no Gore-Tex. And uh, I like to have my socks be thinner uh, so they can also dry quickly. And that way I can just commit to running through creeks and jumping in puddles and all that kind of stuff when I'm out doing my adventures. And uh, these socks definitely do that and uh, they help me avoid blisters, but they're also very breathable thanks to that light mesh design, which works really well in the desert. And uh, this worked well in, in, for Moab recently and it worked well for the Namib desert race um, two years ago as well. So again, not the most durable socks, but a really good investment, especially if you are trying to avoid blisters. Okay, up next are the Solomon S-Lab Ultra 3s. This pair is quite dirty as you can see, and this became my favorite shoe this year. I used this for most of my big training runs. I am sponsored by Solomon, of course, but um, the S-Lab models all fit me just perfectly, and uh, this one is no different. And I think I used this for basically all my long runs except for in Patagonia, I did have a pair of the uh, Solomon Sense Pro 4 still left over. Those have been discontinued though, unfortunately. Um, and I used these for most of the Moab 240. Although partway through, I then changed into the Solomon S-Lab Genesis. And these ones basically acted as my backup shoe throughout the season. They have a little bit more room in the toe box. They're just a little bit more generous and a little bit softer underfoot where the S-Lab Ultra 3 is quite stiff, very responsive, but also can uh, fatigue your foot after a while. And that's where the Genesis came in for me. So I wore these for the last 40 miles of the Moab 240. Although in hindsight, I probably could have just worn these for the entire race. Um, I think this would be a perfect shoe for a 100 to 200 mile distance for me anyway. Uh, for some people, this might be their everyday shoe. All right, moving up the body. Next up are Saks underwear. And these are the Kinetics. They're designed for to be active. Uh, they are, I believe, mostly polyester. I think they're a synthetic blend of some sort. And I wear these so that I can then wear a lightweight trainer, uh, trainer short or pants or tights or anything without a liner over top of them. And this company happens to be based here in Vancouver, although I have no relationship with them, although I should really reach out to them about that because uh, they are something I wear basically for every run. 
run. Um, I first heard about these from my buddy Adam as a way to prevent chafing. Uh, they have sort of a compartment, so they kind of keep everything separate and uh, along with some body glide on the thighs, it just helps me completely avoid chafing. The only downside to wearing an extra layer like this is that it is a little bit warmer. So for any really hot race, uh, you are now doubling up on fabric. It's going to be less breathable. So if I do end up doing really hot races in the future, you know, say Badwater 135 or something, I'd probably skip these and just wear shorts with liners. But for now, they are basically an everyday item for me. And speaking of pants, these are the Solomon Bonatti Pant. Uh, they're similar to the Bonatti jacket that I'll talk about here in a second. And they're basically just a thin waterproof layer. And these came in really handy this season, starting with our fast packing adventure in Patagonia and also for my time spent in the English Fells in the Lake District, where we actually had to carry a pair of waterproof pants for the fell race that I did there. And of course, I used them for the Bob Graham Round where I had some pretty horrible weather. These are lightweight, they're lighter than tights would be, uh, which makes them great for in case of an emergency where you don't anticipate needing them, but you wanna carry them anyway. And also lighter even than a merino wool base layer. So uh, a lightweight pair of waterproof pants are by far um, the best way to satisfy the minimum kit requirements when you're required to have some kind of long leggings for a race. For tops, I like to keep it simple with just these quick dry uh, synthetic t-shirts from Solomon. I only ever wear t-shirts, never long sleeves, because I can then pair these with arm sleeves. And the best model that I've found are from Outdoor Research, the Active Ice Sun Sleeves. This is not sponsored, but I have bought a bunch of these over the years. Um, I think I have four or five pairs now. Not because they rip, they just get really dirty and I like to wash them after every use. And especially in the winter, I find I use them almost every day because they keep you warm when it's cold, but then like being in a car, you can roll down the windows when you start to uh, warm up again and then roll them back up if you get cold. So very flexible, much more versatile than wearing long sleeves. And a pro tip here, when you're running in really warm weather, soak your forearms, uh, the forearms of your sleeves, any chance you can get with cold water, and that really helps to cool you down. I think it's because the uh, blood vessels are quite close to the skin here in your forearms. And over top of all of this, I usually wear the Solomon Bonatti waterproof jacket. Uh, there've been a few different iterations of this over the years. The newest one is quite lightweight, um, and it works well for the first couple of hours, and then it does tend to wet through like any waterproof jacket. Uh, but I use this both for wet conditions and in cooler, drier conditions as an insulating layer. You can wear this over top of, you know, like a, a merino wool base layer, um, potentially even over a lightweight down jacket, um, or in my case, just over top of a t-shirt and arm sleeves because I burn pretty warm and it usually doesn't get too, too cold here. So again, it works for both rain or as an insulating layer. And for that reason, I typically don't even wear soft shell jackets or carry them at all. Um, I'll just carry my waterproof shell and of course wear it in the rain or just keep it stowed away in my pack in case of emergencies. And as I said, the benefit of a waterproof shell is it can go over top of a lightweight down jacket like the Arc'teryx Cerium SL. And again, Arc'teryx is based in Vancouver, although technically they're owned by Amer Sports from Finland, who also owns Solomon. And Amer is in turn owned by a Chinese conglomerate, which itself is partially owned by Chip Wilson, the founder of Lululemon, who happens to be from Vancouver. So full circle there. But I have no personal relationship with Arc'teryx, although Audrey does work for them, so we do get a good deal. Now, this one here is the lightest, most compressible puffy that I've found on the market. Although as a result, I wouldn't say it's the warmest jacket. You're not gonna wear this, you know, for everyday use in the winter, but it's great for emergencies or for peak bagging, you know, where you might only wear it for a few minutes at the top of a mountain or any time that you anticipate only needing it for a short period of time, like waiting at a trailhead for a friend, but otherwise you want something that's as small and light as possible. So this came with us everywhere in Patagonia, for example, especially on our fast pack of Torres del Paine. We wore it when going through John Gardner Pass. And since it's relatively small, I can wear it, as I said, under my Solomon Bonatti waterproof jacket to help uh, cut the wind with the jacket, but then this adds that extra insulating layer underneath as a mid layer. It is pricey, but if you're using it sparingly the way that I do and you try to take care of it by washing it often, then it should last you a long time. I've had this one for years, so I've gotten a lot of value out of this. And for gloves, the Arc'teryx Venta gloves are the only thing that can seem to keep my hands warm when it's really wet and you know around freezing level, like it often is here in Vancouver. 
Um, I have a lighter weight pair here as well for dry conditions. And I like these because they have a longer cuff, so they overlap with my arm sleeves. I have this pet peeve with gloves that are too short. Um, and these ones are called the Row, um, similar to any kind of lightweight model, but uh, these ones happen to be quite durable. So super happy with Arc'teryx gloves. Again, not cheap, uh, but they have an excellent warranty and replacement policy and uh, these ones have held up great. Now, Cieli hats have really grown on me lately. Uh, this one here is the Bucket Hat. I think this is a Solomon Cieli collaboration, but uh, I'm pretty sure you can buy this um, online, and I use this for the Moab 240. And this one here is a Cieli Knack collaboration. You can buy this through Knack, um, but it's really just the Cieli uh, five panel design uh, with a few other design elements on here. Uh, what makes these so great is that they are breathable, they're durable, and importantly, they are machine washable and they'll hold their shape. And they happen to be a Canadian brand as well, based in Montreal. Now the Solomon XA 25 liter pack, you've no doubt seen this in a bunch of my films. Um, I started out with a red one, a few years ago, I used it in Namibia. That one eventually wore out after about 1,200 kilometers or so. Um, and then I now have this gray one. Uh, 25 liters, um, it's fairly lightweight, fairly comfortable. Um, has a little bit of a bounce to it. It's not perfect. Uh, the pockets up front could be bigger, uh, but it does sort of fit like a vest style pack. And uh, I've used this on countless adventures now, including in Patagonia this year. Um, not waterproof, so I did have to use a, a liner there, a waterproof liner. Uh, but uh, otherwise, it's a great pack and has been my go-to for the last couple of years. But something new that I've been experimenting with is the Skyline 30 from Outdoor Vitals. They're a cool cottage brand from the U.S. who mostly makes lightweight backpacking gear, uh, but their CEO, Tayson, has been getting into trail running himself, and I think the team over there is getting excited about fast packing, and so they developed this 30-liter pack, which I actually helped out with um, on some early testing and prototyping, and then uh, I got to try it out for our adventure in the Julian Alps. So Outdoor Vitals did provide this pack. They also financially supported that trip um, and the film, which is coming sometime in the new year. Um, and this pack was actually a little bit large for what we needed at 30 liters, but it was great in that way because it allowed me to carry a little bit of Audrey's gear so that she could get away with a smaller pack. And we also needed helmets um, for the Via Ferrata routes on that, on that trip. And so I was able to strap a helmet to it. And basically it just allowed me to carry a little bit extra gear. Uh, but what this pack would be great for is if you are doing any wild camping where you're carrying maybe a bivy or a lightweight tent, uh, this pack at 30 liters and the way it's designed is definitely going to fit that where something like the Solomon XA25 would be a little bit small for that. And as I said, since I had that Skyline 30 liter for the Julian Alps Traverse, Audrey was able to use her Solomon Advanced Skin 12 liter, which really is my go-to pack for most of my adventures uh, when we're not fast packing. So most of my long days out in the mountains, I'm using this pack and have been for years. And the newer model is great because it has a special pocket at the top for a hard shell jacket, so it's really easy to reach back and grab it or to put it back, along with the usual flasks and other pockets as well. Um, and the reason I love this pack so much is because it fits like a smaller pack when it's empty. It fits more like a five liter pack, say. If you can only afford to buy one pack, I always recommend a 12 liter, something like the Advanced Skin 12. It'll work for a 50K all the way up to a 100 mile race. And to this, I usually attach my Solomon Quiver so that I can store my poles. And for poles, I've been primarily using the Lecky or Likey Ultra Trail FX1 Super Lights. Now, these are probably the most expensive, or at least one of the most expensive on the market, but I absolutely love this glove system. It's similar to a Nordic glove. And um, that's why I switched over from Black Diamond Carbon Zeds that I have been using for years. Having said that, they are not very durable, um, especially the Super Lights. So, unless you can afford to replace these maybe once a season, then I would go down a, a, a model and get the Ultra Trail FX1 instead, or even down a model from that. I'm not sure what those ones are called, but basically these ones are for racing. The slightly heavier ones are for training and uh, like he will tell you that themselves. Um, I've broken two of these now. I broke one during UTMB and then I broke one um, at, during the Bob Graham round. And fortunately I was able to get these fixed when I was in Switzerland. They had a repair place in Interlaken and that was no problem. But previously when I broke one, I was not able to get it fixed from Canada here. So hit and miss with the warranties. Uh, the Black Diamond Carbon Zeds are definitely better value, more durable, they're cheaper. Uh, but if you do want this glove system and you know, kind of the cream of the crop, then these ones are the way to go. Oh yeah, not sponsored yet.
Okay, the Solomon Pulse belt. I started using this a couple of years ago. I tested all of Solomon's belt and I like this model the best. It happens to be the cheapest, uh, but it's just simple and it's durable. Now this is a good way to offload some of the weight from your pack for longer runs. I sometimes keep my iPhone in the front and my GoPro in the back, for example, uh, but it's also great for short runs where a pack is overkill. Uh, so especially on a hot day where you wanna be able to have to breathe, packs can be quite warm. So a belt is definitely great to have in your arsenal. And I use this for all my big adventures this season. The Phoenix HM65R DT is the replacement for the HM65RT that I've been using for a couple of years now. Uh, this one has dual spotlights and I use this new one for Moab, uh, but I use the previous version for all my other big adventures uh, like the Bob Graham Round. It's capable of up to 1500 lumens on turbo mode, but really 1300 on high for up to four hours and then 400 lumens at medium for up to 12 hours, which is the setting that I use. In fact, I'd forget about all the other settings and just focus on this because 400 lumens for 12 hours, that's gonna get you through a night, no problem with battery to spare. Now, Phoenix is one of my sponsors. Uh, they supported a couple of my projects this year financially, but I had been using, as I said, this headlamp for a couple of years, pretty much as my go-to. So that's why this partnership was such a good fit. And then the Phoenix HL32RT is smaller and lighter weight. So I use this one for all of my shorter runs as well as as a backup headlamp. It's still good for up to 800 lumens, 200 lumens on medium for up to eight hours, which is just perfect for evening runs. And the Koros Vertex 2, this is the top of the line GPS watch from Koros. Uh, it's good for up to 140 hours on full GPS mode, along with a bunch of other features, you know, heart rate barometer, the works. Um, on-screen mapping and a large screen. And I've been using this exclusively again for the past couple of years, although I did recently partner with Koros as well, heading into Moab. Uh, so they are a financial supporter of mine. And I did originally get this watch for free to review a couple of years ago when it came out. Um, but really, this is kind of the cream of the crop. So again, if you can't afford uh, the best of the best, this is probably the one I'd recommend. And last but not least, the Solomon XA water filter. I use this thing constantly for short runs, for adventure runs. Sometimes I carry two when I'm fast packing and when it is warm and I'm going out on our local trails here where I know there's gonna be lots of creeks, I'll just take one of these empty and fill it up whenever I get thirsty. This thing really was a game changer when it came out. I highly recommend buying one, if not two. They make a great gift as well and uh, there really is nothing else like it on the market. So as I said, there are links to all of those products in the description below if you wanna learn more. And with that, the 2023 season of my training diaries comes to a close. Thank you all so much for following along this year. I'll be back in January with an update and hopefully some footage from our ski touring adventures if we get any snow anytime soon. And of course, I'll be publishing a bunch of films over the coming months from all of our adventures this season. So stay tuned for all of that. Sign up for my newsletter if you haven't already. And be sure to watch my latest film from the first race that we did this season back in May, the Wild Horse Traverse 52K, which I published earlier this week. My supporting channel members can also watch a version of our fast packing adventure in Torres del Paine National Park with sort of a director's commentary where Audrey and I sit down and provide some additional anecdotes while watching the film. And you can become a channel member if you're not already by clicking the join button from within a web browser.